So these are the solved pro lecture problems for chapter 7. Take a second to read it. I'm given a lot of information about the gas, and the first step to this problem is going to be solve what is the force of the gas. I know that's going to be related to a change in momentum over a change in time using that impulse thing that I talked about. And I know that the momentum is going to be equal to the mass multiplied by the velocity. So the change in momentum is simply going to be the mass multiplied by a change in velocity. So mass change in velocity divided by the change in time. And I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this guy down here. Force of the gas is equal to the mass divided by delta t. And I'm just kind of pulling the change in velocity off to the side here. Now let's take a look at what I know. I know that the, that the gas starts from rest and it ends at a speed of 4.5 times 10 to the fourth meters per second. And I also know the rate of change of mass is going to be 1300 kilograms per second. So I have everything that I need to solve the for the force on the gas. So that's going to be 1300 kilograms per second multiplied by 4.5 times 10 to the fourth meters per second. And the force on the gas is going to be 5.9 times 10 to the seventh newtons. You can see how the units work out. It's going to be kilograms meter per second squared. Since this is the force on the gas, it's going to be in the same direction as the gas. However, if we consider a rocket that is expelling some gas out the back end, we know from Newton's third law that we're going to have an action-reaction pair. The force of the rocket is going to be equal in magnitude opposite in direction to the force on the gas. So simply stated, the force on the rocket is going to be 5.9 times 10 to the seventh newtons. And forces are vectors. They always have directions. So in the direction of the rocket. So on this problem, I have two balls that are colliding. I've got a ball A that's initially moving with some velocity of A, and it's colliding with ball B and that is initially at rest. And then after the collision, the balls are going to be moving at some velocities. I don't exactly know which direction they're going to be in, so I'm just going to put both of these guys equal to a positive velocity. And let the algebra tell me whether they are in the positive direction or in the negative direction. It says that this is an elastic collision, so that tells me I can use conservation of energy. I can also use conservation of momentum and say my momentum beforehand must be equal to my momentum afterwards. Beforehand, let me write the momentum of the system. It's simply going to be the mass of A multiplied by the velocity of A plus the mass of B multiplied by the velocity of B. Afterwards, let me write the momentum of my system. That's going to be the mass of A multiplied by the final velocity of A plus mass of B multiplied by the final velocity of B, where, again, that asterisk means final. I know that the velocity of V was initially equal to zero, and I'm interested in solving for velocity A prime and velocity B prime. To do this, I need to use conservation of energy. Fortunately, the book has already done this for us, and equation 7.7 .7 has combined 
conservation of energy and conservation of momentum to simply write the, the velocity of A minus the velocity of B is equal to the negative velocity of A prime minus velocity of B prime. I will throw out the caveat that this equation comes from the conservation of energy. Do not try to apply it to an inelastic collision. You have to really know what type of collision you are looking at before you root through the book for equations and try to apply them blindly. If you're not sure about the type of collision and you apply this incorrectly, you'll, you'll get the wrong answer. So I'm going to just simply redistribute that negative sign. Velocity of A prime plus velocity of B prime. And much like before, I know that the velocity of B is equal to zero. So I can go ahead and I can rewrite equation 7, 7 for either velocity of A prime prime or velocity of B prime, whichever one suits your fancy. I'll simply add velocity of A prime to both sides and come up with my velocity of B prime to be equal to the velocity of A plus the velocity of A prime. So this equation came from using conservation of energy. Now I can simply plug that guy in right up here to my conservation of momentum and I'm going to rewrite my conservation of momentum equation now such that I'm going to say mass of A multiplied by the velocity of A is equal to the mass of A velocity of A prime plus mass of V velocity of A plus velocity of A prime and I'll just go ahead and distribute that guy out. So mass of A, velocity of A prime, that hasn't changed. Plus mass of B, velocity of A, plus mass of B, velocity of A primed. Go ahead and combine all my like terms and I'm going to solve for the velocity of A prime. So mass of A, velocity of A minus mass of B, velocity of A is going to be equal to mass of A, velocity of A prime, plus mass of B, velocity of A prime. Pull out a VA on this side, or VA prime on this side and pull out a VA on this side and I'm going to say mass of A minus mass of V multiplied by the velocity of A similar thing on this side mass of A plus mass of B on this side velocity of A prime divide both sides by this quantity right here mass of A plus mass of B and I'm going to simply divide by the quantity right here this guy is going to cancel out and I've isolated my velocity of A I can go ahead and I can plug all these guys in and my difference of masses mass of A minus mass of B is going to give me a difference of 0 0.22 kilograms. My sum of masses, this guy down here, is going to give me a sum of 0 0.66 kilograms. I know that the initial mass, or initial velocity was 3.8 meters per second. So my velocity of A prime is now going to be 1.267 meters per second. And the fact that it's positive tells me that it is in the east or positive x direction. So here I'm going to write east. Now I go back to this equation right here and I can simply plug these directly in say 
velocity of V prime is going to be velocity of A, or 3.8 meters per second, plus 1.267 meters per second. And I'm going to come up with 5.07 meters per second. And the E is going to mean east. So that is going to be my V B prime. So this problem is actually a ballistic pendulum of sorts. It's very similar to example 7-9, and it's actually kind of interesting. So if I draw my beforehand picture where I have a mass of a bullet, and it's traveling at some velocity, here I have a big mass of the system, and its velocity is equal to 0, then Afterwards, I'm going to have my bullet embedded in my block of wood, so I'm going to have mass plus big mass, all traveling at some final velocity. Now, the interesting part about this is after the collision, I'm going to have my final velocity the block is going to slide along a frictioned surface such that at some point it's going to have a velocity of equal to zero. What's going on here is this thing called friction has done some work on this block and it has slowed it down. So I'm combining both momentum and energy in this problem. So let me start by seeing if I can come up with an expression for this final velocity after the collision in terms of my frictional force. I know that it was applied over some distance right here. And I know from the work energy theorem that the work done by friction is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy which is going to be equal to 1 half multiplied by the mass and then V final minus V initial. The initial velocity is going to be that V primed. The final velocity is going to be 0. And I also know that the work done by friction is going to be equal to the force of friction multiplied by the distance that it was applied over multiplied by the cosine of the angle in between them. They're in opposite directions, so it's going to be cosine of 180. This force of friction, I'm going to, at cosine of 180 is going to be negative 1, so I'm going to put a negative sign. That force of friction is going to be the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force, which is simply going to be mass times gravity in this case. It's not on a plane. And then my delta x is right here. So what I can do is I can set these two works equal to each other. And I can say 1 half mass velocity final minus velocity initial. And these guys should be squared. Is going to be equal to negative mu sub k multiplied by the mass, multiplied by the gravity, multiplied by that delta x. This final velocity I know is going to be equal to 0. So now I can go ahead and say negative 1 half mass initial velocity squared is equal to negative mu sub k multiplied by mass multiplied by gravity delta x. Lo and behold my masses are going to cancel out and my negative signs are going to go away and I can write my initial velocity 
which is going to be equal to my v primed as the square root of 2 times the coefficient of friction, u sub k, multiplied by gravity, multiplied by how far the box slid. Now what I can do is, is I can um, use my conservation of momentum to say that initially my momentum before is going to be equal to my momentum afterwards and I can say that that's going to be the mass of the little guy multiplied by its velocity and here I'm going to have little mass plus big mass multiplied by V primed. I'm interested in the muzzle speed of the of the gun so I can say velocity is going to be equal to little mass plus big mass divided by little mass multiplied by that by that V primed that I found earlier so 2 mu sub k gravity delta x now I know what all of these guys are I can simply go ahead and I can plug those guys in and I'm going to come up with the velocity of my gun to be 340 meters per second.